Hey, welcome back. My name is Al and we do all kinds of 3D stuff. Blender, ZBrush, Core Mini, you name it. Maya, we're there, we're doing it. Today, I'm gonna block out this really awesome uh, piece of art by Samuel Schultz. Now, uh, linked in the description below is his Instagram. This individual does amazing things with color, uh, but I am gonna be uh, just blocking it out today and hopefully I can get around to texturing and doing all that because I love this, this character. Let's just dive right in. You can see that I've brought in my reference image into ZBrush into the spotlight and linked above is a video on how to do that in case you don't know. But what I'm gonna do is just position my sphere right at the base of his belly. And when I like stretch out a sphere, what I like to do is use the extend deformer. So I go to my gizmo, press the gear, press the extend, and then the polygons are gonna be stretched. So that's when I went ahead and Z remeshed it. From there, you can see I'm just doing some basic shaping and kind of manual tapering with the move brush. Currently, I'm adding his arms and then I'll do his legs. But right now we're on his arms and I use the Shane Olson's 3D Character Workshop insert mesh brushes. They are phenomenal. He's got a lot of great brushes and the insert mesh ones are really, really cool. So those are, uh, those are for free so you can Google that, but I use them a lot. So I can drop those in. I can use my, so with the arms, you can use the bend arc or bend curve, get the nice curvature and still keep those volumes of the arms. So now I'm moving in here a little bit, getting the legs in. Same kind of thing, insert mesh brush for those, the appendage insert mesh brush. And then onto the eyes. The eyes were just a simple quad sphere that I've kind of scaled. And I'm working in symmetry currently. This isn't a symmetrical character, as you can tell, but it's nice to work in symmetry for as long as you can. So I'm not following the reference, uh, the reference image like to a T because I, I can't. It wasn't drawn perfectly symmetrical. So I'm kind of just fudging things around and making sure they work. Now those eyes and eyelids really just placeholders in their current position. Cause if you look at the character, they're not really on the front of the face. So I'll fix those later. Dropped in another appendage, insert mesh brush for the feet. I'm just trying to get that nice little foot shape. It's important when you're doing this, this method to line up uh, where your pieces intersect. So that's why I'm like pulling down where the Achilles tendon would be and the, the heel back there, making that look nice. Um, just so it flows well whenever I either Dynamesh or Remesh by Union, uh, get everything together. But you'll notice anytime I stretch, 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 and I need better geometry, I'm gonna press Z Remesher. I will do that a lot. And important to note on this one, look how low res that I'm working specifically with the body, right? It's very low poly. That helps keep things really, really smooth. Uh, if you have too many polys, things are really gonna get away from you pretty darn quickly. And then you'll be like pushing and pulling and really fighting against yourself. If you keep things low poly, your life's gonna be easier. I promise you that. Well, I can't promise your life will be easier. Your blocking out of your ZBrush sculpts might become a little bit easier. We're trying to get those eyes into a better position. Currently, they just didn't look good. So I broke symmetry, broke the eyes apart, and I am gonna push, shove, get these into position. And with the eyelids, that's another half sphere that I've used insert mesh for. And then I like to just dynamesh the half sphere. That way it becomes like a, a solid and not just a, a shell of a mesh. Make sure it's a high enough resolution. That way uh, it doesn't just uh, get too, uh, too lumpy or anything. So I am literally just trying to get a better idea of where those eyes are placed on the head to better match the reference. So this is super nice having my reference right there on the screen. Obviously you can use pure ref for something like this too, but whenever I want to look through the reference to match proportions and things, spotlight is super, super handy. So now I've increased the resolution quite a bit. And I'm just trying to get that mouth in there. It's not a difficult thing, this mouth, but my geometry was not behaving. So there's a couple ways I can do this. What I chose to do was um, use some Sculptures Pro, use some pinch brushes just to kind of guide the geometry and then press Z Remesh again. You can see I did this a few times. Uh, the geometry just really wasn't turning out super, super great until, you know, just like force the geometry into submission. That's, that's all we're doing there. Filling out the head a little bit more, still looks funky, but the eyes are looking much better. I am digging the eyes and building up where that, I don't know, I guess this thing has a mandible. Who knows, like a little jaw, but it's looking looking okay. Doing some smoothing, making sure things are working. Adding some divisions for the eyeballs so they smooth out a little bit. I could have used dynamic subdivision, but I did not, that's all right. And then insert mesh. 
So you can see very quickly, I went into my brush settings for this uh, insert mesh sphere and changed the depth. So instead of like inserting the sphere right on top, if I lower the depth, it's gonna lower that sphere into the surface. Super, super nice for all these lumpy bumpies on top. Now with the hands, if we look at our reference, they have a very specific silhouette. I dropped in the same appendage that I used for the arms, the legs, and I really wanted to kind of nail the arm shape, but also that thumb. It's very specific, and I knew exactly what I wanted. So it took me a little bit of time using bend curve just to shape that thumb. If you have never used bend curve, you really should. It. I'm amazed every time I use it, just how easy, intuitive that it is. And for years, I just didn't use it, and I don't know why. The things are turning out. Obviously, I've broken symmetry a while ago, but just making sure it reads well from other angles, because from the reference, I only have one angle. But this is a 3D character. In my opinion, there is not much point in creating, spending this much time creating a 3D character just to make it look good from this one side. I've done that before, and it's a waste of time in my opinion. You're spending all this time, make it 3D. Let's uh, put some polish into all sides of this character. Otherwise, why didn't I just like, I don't know, sketch over this thing or do my own sketch which i can't do or paint you know what i mean hope that makes sense so with that in mind working on the back side i started pulling out you know the thighs to make these uh little butt cheeks i really wanted just a um, cute playful naked little mushroom guy and he needed some some butt cheeks for sure maybe the artist knows what the back side of his character looks like maybe he thought about that maybe he didn't with these little cheeks the things are looking really, really good. I'm happy with proportions. I'm happy with the head, arms, body, everything is just really flowing together. If I'm looking at it now, I would say the neck still is too thick, but honestly in 3D, this might be okay. We'll have to see. I'm not finished with this sculpt yet. So let me know in the comments below if you like these block out videos. I think it's a very important step and I'll probably split up my videos a little bit more like that. I might have a blockout video and then the full version, but in the blockout, I can really just dive deep like we did and just kind of explain the process a little bit better because this is probably the most important step. Obviously, gathering reference, research, the blocking out. I would argue it's the most important step of sculpting because if you don't, it's not gonna, all the details that you put in is not gonna fix it unless you've actually done the hard work at the beginning. That's why it's so important. So thank you so much for hanging out, sticking around for this video. I think you all are awesome. Stay that way. I'll see you next time.